So the second goal for this section was to look at sums and products of the roots, and this is specific to quadratics versus polynomials, which we'll talk about later. So the sums and products of a function that looks like this, you can see that this can be factored into x minus 3 times x plus 8, where the roots are going to be positive 3 and negative 8. It's always those opposites there. So when we look back at our original function, you can see that 5 is the sum of 8 and negative 3, and 24 is the product of 8 and negative 3. So that's supposed to be negative 24. So we're going to try to generalize that into a format that's helpful. So ax squared plus bx plus c um, is equal to a factored out version of a times the quantity x minus, that's an alpha, x minus beta, where you have roots alpha and beta. So here it's the opposite of alpha, the opposite of beta, coming up with roots alpha and beta. Oops, I'll move my arrow. So c is going to be our product. We should feel pretty comfortable with that. But b, we've got something going on there. So we're going to see how we can relate the product and the sum of the roots when it's got a leading coefficient other than 1. So let's start here. Let's divide that a out on both sides. So I just have x minus alpha, x minus beta. Okay. And then we're going to multiply all of our terms together. So there, there, and then there, there. So making sure that you have done that double distribution so each term multiplies together with each term. So when I simplify this out, I've got x squared minus alpha x minus beta x plus alpha times beta. So this right here would combine to give us our b term. Okay. So x squared minus, we're going to pull out the minus here, and then we have alpha plus beta. So if you were to redistribute that, you would have minus alpha minus beta, and then you multiply the x in also, minus alpha x minus beta x. And then we have our last term, which is just the two roots multiplied together. So we're going to look back here at our general form, ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to divide that a out. So x squared plus b over ax plus c over a is the same as, because we showed it up here, um, x squared minus alpha plus beta times x plus alpha plus beta. I'm sorry, alpha times beta. So when we look at these two things together, this term right here and this term right here are the same, although written algebraically different. And then this term right here and this term right here are the same. So we can use that to say that beta over alpha, I'm sorry, b over a, is equal to the opposite of the sum of the roots. And then in the green here, we can say that c over a is equal to the product of the roots. Okay, so we're going to use it. I'm still talking to the camera. <laughs> That's Miss Hansen. <laughs> so given that um, alpha and beta, beta are the roots of 2x squared plus 6x minus 5, we're going to see if we can find the sum and the product of the roots. So we're going to look at our rule. First thing we're going to have to do is divide the a out here. So this is becomes x squared plus 6 over 2. I'm going to leave that as 6 over 2 instead of 3, just so you can see it. But otherwise, there's not a specific reason I'm doing that. So now it's in that form. 
where we've put the a as the denominator of each term. So when we looked earlier, we saw that this right here was the opposite of the sum, and this right here was the product. So we can write that out. So the sum is the opposite of 6 divided by 2, so it must be the opposite of 3, and we write that as negative 3. And then the product is going to just be whatever this last term is, so negative 5 halves. So we're going to try to find and create an equation whose roots are double alpha and double beta. Well, let's see what we can do there. So So this is what it would look like in that factored out form where we're using the alpha and the beta instead of the a and b. So this is equal to x squared plus b over a x uh, plus c over a. So we know that this term right here is the opposite of our sum. This term right here is our product but we want to double everything. So we're going to double the two roots, and we can do that um, to each term, or we can do that simultaneously by doubling the sum. So we'll put that in front. And then if I double two, if I take and I double alpha and I double beta, then I get 2 times that and 2 times that, which is going to give us 2 times 2, which is 4 alpha beta. Okay, so we've got pretty much all of the things we need here. So we know that alpha plus beta is negative 3. So, okay, let's go back and put that in. Negative 3 from up here, plus 4 times alpha times beta. So that's negative 5 over 2. And that is from right here. We're going to simplify this out. And we're going to get the equation whose roots are double alpha, double beta would be x squared minus 2 times minus 3 gives us plus 6x. And then we'll put that over 1 and cancel and make that a 2. So 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So this is the equation that meets those requirements. Okay. Um, let's go over this one as a group in class tomorrow, but see if you can start it. So, the, so these are the roots for some new equation. Find the new equation. So we're going to do this one as a class tomorrow. But see if you can figure out, maybe just give it a shot. See how you do on that one.